Now, conical pendulum is yet another situation to which we can apply both our circular motion equations and everything we know about forces. So before we work through the maths, let's have a look at what a conical pendulum actually is. So a conical pendulum is a pendulum that goes around in a circle like this. So the mass, the bob itself, is tracing out a circular path and it's got a few forces acting upon it. It's got the tension force, which is acting up the string, and it's also got the weight force, which is pulling it down. And the combination of these two result in it undergoing circular motion, and so the centripetal force is the resultant of these two forces acting upon it. So let's have a look at the equations that we can use now to describe this. And we're asked to derive an expression for the tension in a con conical pendulum when the bob of mass m moves on a string of length l at speed v, tracing out a path with radius r. So let's sketch a little diagram. Here's our string, which has got some tension t in it. Here's our bob, it's got a weight force mg acting down, and let's let this be angle theta. Now there's two ways that we can think about this. We've got the forces here, but we can also consider the displacements. So we know that our string has a length l, this is meant to be the same angle theta here, and that the radius of this circular path here is given by r. So this is the displacement picture. Now these forces result in a resultant force towards the center, mv squared on r, which is the centripetal force. So this force comes about because of the sum of this force and this force. So considering the horizontal forces here, we can say horizontally, Well, mg does not contribute, but we can split this tension force into a vertical and a horizontal component. So the horizontal component is given by T sine theta, and that is equal to mv squared on r. And here we can write, well, sine theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, so that's r over l. So we can substitute this in here. So we've got that T times r over l is equal to mv squared on r, which tells us that t is equal to mv squared over r squared, and then we've got an l up here. And so if v decreased, what would happen to the path traced out by the bob? Well, as t decreased, this centripetal acceleration is going to decrease, so the radius is going to get smaller.